Yes. Um, I don't know where this will fit in. I'm currently in San Francisco. I'm in a hotel that is connected to the airport. Today is D-Day. I am leaving for Taiwan today. I'm not feeling 100% physically. Um, I think I just like, I got myself super, super stressed out the last couple of days and I haven't been eating well or sleeping well. I have not slept well in like two days. Um, I don't usually sleep on planes super great, so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I can try to sleep on the plane. Um, if not, I'm going to zonk out at my quarantine hotel once I arrive in Taipei. But otherwise, yeah, I have to leave in about an hour. Everything is ready. Hopefully I have all my documents and I just get on the plane. Welcome to the shenanigans. It's actually happening. It'll be, it'll be really wild. this thing on so I made it I'm in Taipei Taiwan right now um, obviously I am in a hotel room I am in quarantine it took a lot to get here both in the last 72 hours and obviously almost a year before that it's currently day two in quarantine. Yesterday, um, ugh, I don't even know where to start. Yesterday was wild. Let's just kind of back up and we'll quickly go from the beginning. So I got onto my plane onto San into San Francisco the night before I was planning to leave. I changed my flight the day before. Um, the day before I was supposed to leave, so the 26th I flew out. That was only because I didn't have enough time between my connecting flight because my flight changed again. That is the longest flight that I've ever been on. I will say, I am not a person who sleeps well on planes. I got maybe a half hour of sleep the whole 13 hours. So long story short, I... I'm sick. I feel like garbage. My ears were clogged from the pressure on the plane and I have a sore throat and I'm congested. So besides that, I'm fine. I just don't feel great. I feel very weak. When we were going over the international date line, roughly halfway through the flight, we hit some crazy turbulence for about an hour. And usually I'm totally fine with turbulence. It usually doesn't bother me. I'm usually good. This time it really got the best of me. I was super nauseous. There were a couple times there where I thought I was going to have to run to that bathroom. <sighs> and so I basically spent the three hours after that just trying to stay still and calm down. Once we landed, we landed local time at like 6.30 in the afternoon, 6.30 at night. And then we immediately go, 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 no stopping, boom, boom, boom. We got off the plane, immediately checked in with the Ministry of Education because I am a student in month scholarship. So the first thing I had to do was check in with them. I got a sticker, I got a quarantine sticker, all the things. Um, immediately got a SIM card, realized that my phone was locked. Immigration was surprisingly quick. All they needed was my passport, my visa, and my entry permit, and it took a whopping three seconds. There was nobody else there at that point because I was having issues with my SIM card, so everyone else had gone. Got out, got my luggage, and then had to go and take the COVID test. I grabbed my bags, walked out of the airport, and that was immediately when the heat hit me right away. It was, I had to drop off my bags at the corner of the airport, I walked around, and then 
like I was in the bike lane, obviously it's written like people in bike lane on the cement in Mandarin characters. So I was like, oh God. And it was toasty. It was like 89, 90 degrees and the sun had gone down and it was nighttime. But I went outside of the airport, looped back around and then they gave me my test kit and then I faced a wall and I spit into a cup and that was my saliva test. Then I took it to the people that were taking them and then I grabbed my luggage, waited in a very long queue to get a taxi to Taipei. Quarantine Hotel, where I am right now, is only about 15 minutes from campus. It's pretty close. And then, of course, my taxi driver dropped me off at the wrong hotel. Because I'm supposed to be in quarantine, I cannot get another taxi. After figuring out that I was at the wrong hotel with the poor guy at the other hotel who was trying to figure out who the heck I was, I talked to the front desk woman at the other hotel and she's like, oh, you can't take a taxi, but it's down the street. And sure enough, it wasn't super far. Um, so I walked with all three of my bags in the streets of Taiwan. Not supposed to be doing this, by the way. I'm supposed to be in quarantine. I'm not supposed to be out, but I needed to get to my correct hotel. So I just went straight to my hotel, past a bunch of convenience stores, and I wasn't thinking in the moment, but looking back, oh, I just would've loved, like, a snack or something from the 7-Eleven, but I got in, got to the correct hotel, finally. A sweet woman asked if I needed a cab, and I was just like, no, no, I know where I'm going, thank you. Eventually got there, had more issues with my SIM card, finally figured it out. I had to sit outside on a bench with my luggage and whatever. At this point, I kind of blacked out. It was, I was so tired. I was just ready to go to sleep. Went to sleep. I did not sleep well that first day at all because I was so congested. I had to be propped up. I couldn't breathe. And just kind of getting acclimated. I was not feeling my best yesterday mentally and obviously physically. I basically had a meltdown because I didn't think I was supposed to be here. Like, I'm not cut out for this. I'm not XYZ. Even though I've been working to get to this point for over a year. Today is the second day of quarantine. It's currently August 30th. I get out on the 4th, um, which means I have four more days to fully be in here. But for now, welcome to quarantine. We have a few more days in here. I will record all of the exciting moments. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of needed because I don't feel great, but it's not COVID, so I don't know. I just kind of needed a quick break before I get thrown into school. Yeah, kind of get situated. And then this happened. Yep, I tested positive. After two years of being safe and not getting COVID, I got it when I moved to Taiwan. I was then moved to a quarantine facility. This is the view outside of our window, um, and that was the only day it was sunny because then we had a typhoon for approximately four days and it rained nonstop. Next quick here is a tour of kind of the quarantine facility. As you can see, there's the door. Um, as we turn around here, there was a drying rack, and this is kind of the view from the door. There's a TV, and it works just fine. There were two beds. Um, the mattresses were rock hard. They were like traditional bamboo mattresses. Um, we did have a lights over our bed, but only one of them worked. Mine did not. We had um, then dressers. Uh, that's where I kept my suitcase for the most part. And then we had desks. We did have one lamp to split between the two of us. This was on my final day, so as you can see, I was kind of getting ready to leave, finally. Um, and then this is the bathroom, which was right around the corner. And typical wet room Asian bathroom. There was there's all of my things, a mirror, a sink, a toilet, and a shower. It was very loud and kind of eerie, but yeah, that is the quarantine facility I was in. Security 
Dinner has been delivered. Please wear a mask and open the door to pick up the meal. After picking up the meal, please close the door and enjoy dinner. Bữa tối đã được sao, vui lòng đeo khẩu trang và mở cửa lấy đồ. Sau khi dọn đồ ăn xong, vui lòng đóng cửa và thưởng thức bữa tối. Makan malam sudah diantar. Mohon pakai masker dan buka pintu untuk mengambil makanan setelah mengambil makanan. Harap tutup pintu dan nikmati makan malam. started off this video um kind of rocky but now as you can see it is much later i'm in my dorm i'm unpacked i am settled in and i'm finally ready to talk about what happened in quarantine okay for starters i arrived on august 28th 2022 and i moved hotels two days later when i tested positive I got my first positive result about midway through the day on the 30th, which was roughly two days after I had landed and taken the initial PCR test. And I basically got a text from the hotel saying that my PCR was positive and that I needed to pack my bags. I packed my bags, I got everything ready, and then later that day at about 3 in the afternoon, they told me to come downstairs with my bags and I was supposed to get in a different get in a taxi to go somewhere else. I tried contacting the um, Taiwan quarantine like emergency line and they just said that I would be going to a different facility and that I they couldn't give me any more information than that because there were a lot of positive cases and a lot of people that they were moving around. It was about 15 minutes to the new quarantine facility. We got there, I got out, sprayed me down with a bunch of disinfectant and a bunch of antibacterial stuff and then I was given a bag with a thermometer and a oximeter to constantly be checking my oxygen levels and my temperature. What I did not know was that I was going to have a roommate. Thank god, um, shout out to Louisa wherever she's at. There wasn't a roommate with me in a room that was half the size of my other hotel. Um, both of us had tested positive and we were supposed to keep our distance from each other but also like how could you even do that and how tiny of a room that we were in it was basically impossible once we were there we took another covid test the next day and then she took another one the day prior because if you have two negative tests while you're in quarantine, you can petition to get out early. If you have two negative tests, they will, there's a couple more forms you have to fill out or they fill out for you before you can leave, but you are allowed to leave earlier than the seven day period. Once you get your second negative test after the first PCR was positive, you're good to go. They'll let you go out into the world. My second PCR obviously came back positive. I was totally sick, I totally had COVID. I had a bunch of the symptoms, as mild as they were, I had 
almost everyone you could think of. I had low-grade fever, congestion, runny nose, sore throat, um, loss of taste and smell, headaches. I had a good chunk of most of them. They were super mild and they were able, like, they kept at bay, but I did have all of them. As you heard, they would sound over the loudspeakers and they would let you know when you can grab your food and when you can't. So this was the tricky part that I was a little bit confused by. By the time we were allowed to leave, or I was allowed to leave, they did not bother testing me again. I did not get another PCR test or an at-home test to clarify if I was negative. They just kind of let me go. They were able to call me a taxi and then I came straight to campus. I didn't have a choice in the matter of what time I left. I couldn't technically te check into my dorm until around nine in the morning that day, but the quarantine hotel said, listen, you can either leave at midnight on the 12 a.m. dot, or you can leave at like 6.40 in the morning because there were so many people that were leaving the quarantine hotel that same day. And I haven't gone to any crowds, but I have needed to do stuff on campus. Just like, especially today, I needed to go and I needed to register for classes. Keep myself as far away from people as possible, but also needed to do what I needed to do in order to get everything done on time. Okay, hi, sorry, my camera died and it got dark, so now we have artificial lighting. I had no other choice but to go straight downstairs. There was a taxi waiting for me. I got in the taxi, I fumbled, but I got to NCCU and then directed the taxi driver from there because my Chinese is Tai Wu Hao, um, but I'm working on it. And obviously it'll have to come eventually, so just more practice, I guess. After we got out, um, the original hotel that I was supposed to stay at <clears throat> for all seven days refunded me the amount of the last four or five days that I wasn't there. And the quarantine facility that I was moved to never took any payment method from me. I never paid anything. I don't know who pays for that. I don't know how the government distinguishes what happens in that kind of a scenario. I don't know if this has happened to other people coming to Taiwan or if anyone else has gotten COVID and had to be moved. Um, but I didn't have to pay for the rest of the hotel. I only had to pay for the two days that I was at the original hotel. And at the new place, they gave us food every single day, three meals a day. It was a facility and they didn't have, they didn't have a kitchen on site, I don't think. So most of our food was takeout. It was super traditional Ch Taiwanese um, takeout and I think it was pretty cheap. But again, I wouldn't know because I was never charged. I don't know how or who ends up paying for that. But then, yeah, that was about it. Then I came here and it's been a rocky couple days. It'll, it's been a rocky start. Um, I just feel like I was not mentally prepared for any of the stuff that happened in the first few days here. Um, I've got even more stuff to do tomorrow, so hopefully it will be as smooth as possible. Um, but I will keep you updated. I will let you know what shenanigans we get up to. And until next time, let's hope I don't get run over by a scooter or something dramatic. <laughs> Bye, you guys.